types of validations which can be done in client side human services using bpm ui toolkit the three types of validations i'll be talking about uh, one of them is simple on change validation whenever the data changes on any of the screen right there we can do validations second type of validation is a combined validation for the entire form on submit of the form and third type of validations is a data change validation utilizing the data change tab available in client side human services so let's take a look at simple on change validations so here we have a coach view for address information user can enter the address information here and as soon as they make a change to the field the on screen value on change validation will fire before we go deep into the validation mechanism let's take a look at how we put in the required red asterisk mark next to the label so for each of the field where you want to display the red asterisk mark you can go to html attributes and put in a certain custom class uh, here the custom, name of the custom class is required and if you go to the css uh, we have created a simple class tag required is the tag name and for required the span within it contains the label of the text input field and there we are specifying the color red and the content as a asterisk mark so a red asterisk mark will appear so as you can see here it's a visivig because the styles are displayed so whenever you apply the required class the asterisk mark will appear immediately next to the label of the field okay so let's run it and see how it works so as you can see if you enter something here and come out of the field the validation is okay because it's it has some text in it but if you remove that text and come out of it the validation on change immediately fires and the tooltip text is displayed this field is required same ap applies for the other required fields also so let's see behind the scenes how it is implemented so if you go to the coach view which contains the text box in the events we have placed this code which is a simple four or five lines of code me is the current coach viewer the current text box and me if the me dot get text is blank we set valid as false otherwise we set valid for the me that means this control as true okay so uh, this was the on change validation now let's take a look at on submit validation which is pretty similar to this one but takes it one step further and does a combined validation for multiple fields on submit validation uh, let's run it and see how it works when you hit submit without entering any of the required fields a combined validation is performed for all the required fields or any other kind of validation which you have coded and if you key in some data into it and then try to submit the validations are okay and this time it should submit properly as you can see it was submitted properly so let's take a look how this is implemented so we have created a coach view function in the inline javascript which basically is this dot validate function and we have taken a handle of the the 
current view as underscore this so we are getting a handle on each of the controls for example the address line one control the city control state control and zip control utilizing ui.get and the control id these are the control ids of the controls so we create a uh, function wide variable valid is equal to true but whenever any even if a single validation fails we set that variable to false and return that at the end of this function and this is the bpm ui toolkit provided method which utilizing which you can set a certain control to valid true or valid false and you can provide the tooltip text also attached to that particular control so how does this function get invoked so if we go to the coach view and we have placed a on click handler for the submit button in the events in the on click we are returning the validate function of the coach view so this is a way to get a handle utilizing the coach view id to the particular coach view and the function defined within that coach view is validate is run and whether it returns true or false is returned by the on click so returning a true or false in an on click event stops or executes the boundary event attached to that on click of that button so if we return false in an on click then the boundary event is not triggered if we return true then the boundary event is triggered so this is the mechanism of an on submit validation uh, now let's take a look at one new feature available in CSHS, which is a data change. So as you can see on the coach, there is a tab called data change. And what happens is whenever the data within the coach changes, then this particular fun uh, method is invoked and whatever you have scripted here gets invoked. So for example, we want to limit a user's ability to enter a number between 1 and 100. If they enter something less than 1 or more than 100, then we don't want to enable the run button. So as you can see, we started off with the disabled run button. And if you enter a valid value, which is 60, the run button is enabled. And again, if you change the value to something more than 100, the run button gets disabled. So how this is done is uh, we have a coach where we have attached the visibility of the run button to a certain variable, button visibility. And the input con uh, control is bound to the variable run number. And it's pretty simple. As you can see, if the run number is between 0 and 100, we make the button visibility editable. Otherwise, we make the button visibility read-only. So that's uh, the three types of validations which you can do. And if you want to get advanced, uh, like you need data returned from an ODM service or do validations based on additional services like database retrieval, LDAP retrieval, all those you can combine, that functionality you can combine into a service call and you can attach the service call to your on submit validation function. So it's the basic concept is same but you are enhancing it with service calls and additional validations from other integrations so here you can do the plug in your validations to the service call get the data from the service call and utilize that uh, to validate the input whether that is a valid input or not so that concludes our session for all the ways of validating using BPM UI toolkit. I hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you.